Last episode of Bombshell was dropped in West London as Jeff Bezos bought a stake in Fulham demanding an American-style revolution at the club. And it seems like he's opened the eyes of other A-list celebrities to the bright lights of Graven Cottage because in steps Michael Jordan to my office for a quick chat. Hello there, this is American basketball legend Michael Jordan. Since the new American outlook, here are some quality American talents that I think could help your team. Pulisic is a great winger who'd love a return to the Premier League. And Weston McKinney could partner in midfield and become as legendary as Clint Dempsey. Now currently the only two American players that we've got at the club with a 36-year-old player for the history books in Tim Ream and of course my number one choice left back in Anthony Robinson. But with Jeff making it abundantly clear that he sees the American market as a huge platform for growth at the club and wants us to find the next Clint Dempsey or Brian McBride who can lead the club to glory, I'm not sure those two are going to be enough to take this team to where Jeff wants it to be. Now to be fair, since the departure of the 28-year-old Yao Palina, the centre of my midfield has been in a constant state of flux. Harrison Reed has failed to impress in what little opportunities he's had. And to be fair, the same can be said for Sasa Lukic. We've made two new signings in Nicolas Dominguez and the 25-year-old Norwegian Sander Burge who has really struggled since joining the club and whilst Tom Keane he's done absolutely everything he can to take the fight for a starting spot in the heart of my midfield getting three goals and two assists in just nine appearances with him being 32 years of age he's hardly the future at the heart of the club so despite me bringing in those two new signings it does still feel like very much a problem position for me in that area of the pitch and potentially that is where someone like Weston McKinney could come in to solve said problem it looks like he's now applying his trade at Brentford here in this career mode so perhaps the other London club got to him before we possibly could however look at the versatility being able to play central midfield central defensive midfield and right midfield plus with him entering his prime years and being 79 rated and of course from the States he potentially could be the marquee signing that Mr Bezos has been so desperately searching for speaking of marquee signings though with Adama Traore and Harry Wilson really not being at the level that's going to cut it here at Fulham and with Emi Buendia really not performing at a particularly high level since joining in the club getting no goals and no assists in eight appearances it still feels like the right hand side of my midfield is a problem area as well and if Mr Bezos is looking for an American statement signing look no further than this man Christian Pulisic he's of course already got Premier League experience at the highest level with Chelsea and just like Weston McKinney with him being 25 years of age he is entering his prime having the versatility to play on both sides of the midfield and already at an 83 rated he would be a absolutely phenomenal signing that would certainly take this team to the next level however with him playing at AC Milan at the moment and obviously playing European football would he want to make the move to Fulham Football Club right now so with that in mind and of course with some of the American contacts that Jeff Bezos has at his disposal I've decided and been able to invite Christian Pulisic and of course his top tier agent to a little bit of spot of lunch to try and see if I can convince him to join the Fulham project he says to me at the moment that he's playing his football at the highest level in Syria and why on earth would he want to take a step down to Fulham and I try to explain to him that not only will a move to the Premier League be wonderful for his brand but I also try to explain the sort of project and ambition that Jeff Bezos has and where he wants to take this Fulham team to in the long term and whilst it seems to have piqued the interest of the American he's still unsure at this point in his career and exactly where Fulham are right now whether or not it's the right step for him to make but he tells me that if Fulham can really show some sort of level of ambition and really make a statement this season by qualifying for Europe he will consider his options and he will have a conversation with Jeff Jeff Bezos and he will potentially join Fulham if the time is right next season and after a pretty decent start to the season in the opening couple of months with the club sitting in fifth place in the Premier League after just nine games who knows against all odds this might be something that these players can achieve this season however just when I thought the stardom couldn't get any bigger it seems like Michael Jordan is not the only A-lister with a sudden interest in Fulham because how's it going Michael and Adrian it's Steph Curry here from the Warriors I'm going to be in attendance at Graven Cottage for a few weeks to see how life is going and to meet some of the staff as for suggestions of players I suggest scouting the MLS for hidden gems to keep Jeff happy in addition to this use the youth academy to your advantage I don't know much about soccer, but I hope this helps. Now, he may not know a lot about soccer, but he is absolutely right from a scouting perspective. If we're going to find some of the best American talent on the game, then obviously it makes sense to start in the States. Luckily for me, I have one of the best young scouts that America have to offer in Stephen Perry, who I'm going to send straight over to his native country to begin his work in the MLS. In the meantime, he's absolutely right about our youth academy, because after Jeff had a quick look about what we have to offer already existing at the club, he was thoroughly unimpressed with some of our young prospects. And so that is why he gave me enough budget to try and set up some youth scouting networks in Canada, in Mexico, and of course in his native United States to try and find some of the best young talent across North America. And have we gone and done just that? Because a 17-year-old Jonathan Jones, a left-footed right winger, has been discovered. And with the youngster having a potential of 90 overall, could we have very...
very well found the very next Clint Dempsey. It looks like he can play on the right hand side of midfield which has obviously been a serious problem era for me as you well know and with him being 17 years of age and head and shoulders above the rest of the players that I've got at my disposal in my youth academy I'm going to go ahead and promote him straight to the senior team which of course he's absolutely delighted about having dreamt about this opportunity since he was a young boy. However with him just being a 51 rated he might have that something special but it seems like he's still got a bit of a long way to go if he wants to try and stake a claim in my starting 11. So if he wants to make his debut he's going to have to wait just a little bit longer. But now though it's back to the football on a prolonged run of games starting off unfortunately with a 2-1 away loss to Brighton before managing to sneak past Manchester City on penalties in the Carabao Cup 4-2. Unfortunately though it's not back to back wins in Manchester as Manchester United this time round beat us 4-3 back in the Premier League before getting back in the win column away from home this time against Aston Villa 2-1. We can't make it back to back wins though suffering another loss in the Premier League this time 2-1 at home against Wolves before finally succumbing to yet another defeat this time 2-1 away from home at Anfield to Liverpool. A dismal run of results as we head into the hectic Christmas period has left us into the bottom half of the table 14 games in just 18 points on the board and suddenly our great start is starting to become undone and so now though with a little bit of fatigue sitting in and rotation needed to be made I think Fulham need a fresh injection of youth to try and get us back on track and that is why ahead of our home tie against Nottingham Forest at Craven Cottage the 17 year old Jonathan Jones despite him just being 51 rated is going to get his opportunity to impress in the starting 11 it's a starting 11 that I've had to rotate heavily and that means that whilst Leno's kept his place in goal Castagna starts at the back with Sutalo and Bassi in the heart of the defence Balotori starts on the left hand side Lukic partners Dominguez in the heart of the midfield of course Jonathan Schoen starts on the right Pereira Iwobi starts behind Raul Jimenez up front well this is going to be a real test of the Fulham squad here to see whether or not we've got what it takes to cope with the rigours of the Premier League especially in such a hectic Christmas period obviously with so many changes and with my squad not exactly being where I want it to be in the long term it's going to be a big ask here to try and get three points against Nottingham Forest as Andreas Pereira tries to go past the centre-back but gets absolutely hacked down for his troubles. TL down the line to Giovanni Reina, the former Borussia Dortmund man, now applying his trade for Nottingham Forest here, has played it back into the path of the right-back, lovely ball into Morgan Gibbs white Morgan Gibbs white though, is blocked off by Sutalu, the Croatian's done just about enough to narrow the angle, which meant Leno was able to get a save on that one after a really good passage of play there from Nottingham Forest, but they've got a corner here inside the opening 10 minutes, as they've been certainly the better of the two teams, it's thrown in though, Dominguez so calm at the back, and his mistake has really cost us as Uwani has managed to snap up the loose ball after Dominguez was just too composed for his own good inside the penalty area, inside the only six yard box and he's just let it fall right into the path of Awani. And of course, the big man is not going to miss from there. Still a really good strike from a tight angle. But Leno could do nothing about it. Nottingham Forest take a 1-0 lead. As you can see, my squad is being really tested to the limited today. With players in it who clearly do not feature for me on a regular basis in the starting 11. And clearly showing why they don't have the quality to do so. But at the moment, it's played back into Andreas Pereira. He had the chance to level the scores hit with about 10 minutes after the Nottingham Forest goal. But unfortunately for us, he couldn't quite take it. And Nottingham Forest leave. Salo into Dominguez, into Lukic, out to Awobi on the left-hand side. Awobi tried to play it in the centre. Danilo, though, with a really good interception. And pretty much every single pass at the moment we're trying to play is not finding the feet of the intended target. But Bassi comes across with a challenge. And it's a good challenge. And it releases Awobi. who's going to try and see if he can burst into the centre here. Plays the ball into that man, Jones, who takes it on with his left. Short pass into Andreas Pereira. Out to Balatore on the left, who tries to cut it back in into Awobi. No one, though, showing any sort of angle and the Nigerian runs into a bit of problems but Lukic wins the ball back in a really good position Raul Jimenez on the edge of the box strikes it's a bit of a wayward one Jones can't get on the loose ball and in the end Sofalo will bring it clear for Nottingham Forest Gates for Forest once again out to Callum Hudson and Doy back inside for Wani who takes it on can't go past Dominguez though Dominguez into Bassi the centre back to bring it out of defence into Awobi one touch pass into Raul Jimenez Jimenez is going to float it across to Jones on the right hand side he's going to look for the overlap he finds the overlap of the Belgian Castagna throws it in looking for the big man Raul Jimenez can't quite find him looks like he's just straight offside though it's a Toffolo good challenge though by Jones the young man showing the eagerness and the sort of desire that I was exactly hoping he would be showing it today but Bassi is not showing the level of quality coming in for Issa Diop at the heart of my defence giving the ball away fortunately we win it back Diop into uh, Wobi a Wobi to try and play it down the channel into Andreas Pereira it's going to be the last attack of the game Balo Torre floats it across into the box too close to the goalkeeper as the referee blows for half time well, as we begin the start of the second half it's been poor all over the pitch here for Fulham 1-0 down and deservedly so we've not really carved out any decent opportunities so far we've got to try and see if we can change 
going to that here in the second 45 by Torre. Short one into Lukic and he gets the ball back and now he's going to go down the left hand side but instead plays it central into Raul Jimenez looking for an overlapping run. Finds one on the outside into Awobi who's just straight offside again. Well, our fringe players here not doing their causes any good whatsoever. It's been a real poor display all over the pitch and we're showing some real rustiness and some real lack of cohesion here as Awobi though does a really good job of winning the ball back. Plays it into Raul Jimenez who's going to play it back around the corner into the Nigerian and he's managed to get there ahead of the defender looking for the cutback. Almost found it into Andre Pereira, it just got caught under his feet and in the end the goalkeeper claims the ball, that was the best chance of the game so far for Fulham, it is that man Pereira who wins it back once again, into Jones, shifts it onto his left, looks like he's trying to line up some space here for a strike, he does straight at the defender good piece of play though from the young man once again we're camped inside this Nottingham Forest half here as Balo Torre with about 10 minutes left remaining on the clock, gives it to Diamenguez, who strikes from distance, forces the goalkeeper into a really smart save. Awobi keeps it in play, into Pereira. Pereira looking for the ball back into the Argentinian. This time it's Yates with a crunching challenge to win the ball back. Toffolo, though, the left back to burst down this left hand side. Dominguez is the man who's frantically coming across, trying to put the challenge in here as my defence is starting to get opened up here as this game is getting stretched. Oh my goodness, Castagna with an absolutely horrendous challenge. And somehow the referee tried to play advantage in the end, gives the free kick. But with just a few minutes remaining and Jones and a few other of my players running on fumes, I have made a much belated substitution here, a quadruple substitution, as we look to try and do something before the end of the game to see if we can get a goal back here. As Sander Burge picks it up, looking for the ball into Willian. But once again, he can't find the pass. Sander Burge is not the only man who's been poor today, but he's been poor pretty much since joining Fulham in the summer. Giovanni Reina down this right-hand side. Nottingham Forest have got us exactly where they want. Us. And they've got a free kick for their travels, which of course Reina is going to take, dinks it into the box. It's headed away though by the big Croat in Sutalu Lukic into the path of William, but the referee blows for full time. Once again, the poor form continues here today, and once again, it's another loss under the lights at Craven Cottage because a full time era finishes 1 0 Nottingham Forest. Well, to be fair, it was a tough ask for me to expect a 17 year old, 51 rated, to come in and show us immediately that he's got that something special. It wasn't the best performance for the young man, he did show a couple of decent touches, but he was a few nerves out there and it does go to show that he's not quite at the required level that I need him to be. Perhaps in my desire to satisfy the American whims of Jeff Bezos I threw him in in the deep end which after a series of poor performances in the Premier League was merely an act of desperation. I still think though Jonathan Jones has something to offer us in the long term so that's why I'm going to stick him on the low list in the hope that come January another team will come in for him and he can secure some much needed first team football. But for us with us almost at the halfway point of the Premier League and unfortunately finding ourselves in 13th spot with 30 2 million pounds still left in the budget and us being a few weeks away from the January transfer window I think we're probably going to need one more signing to bring into the club to try and resurrect our poor form let me know down below what areas of the team you think need the most improvement and what player you think would have the biggest impact in a Fulham shirt before the end of the episode though with my first and normal starting 11 feeling back in tip top shape I'm going to give this team one last opportunity to try and get themselves back in my good books and claim a much needed three points back Back at Craven Cottage. Of course, barring a couple of changes, it is a return back to my strongest starting 11 with Leno in goal, Tete Diop, Sutalo and Robinson at the back. Kearney comes in in the centre of the park to partner Dominguez. The only big changes, I guess, are Traore starts on the right hand side, Buendia starts behind the striker, Iwobi starts on the left and of course Munoz starts up front with Andreas Pereira feeling a little bit of fatigue dropping to the bench. It's West Ham though who are going to kick us off here with a free kick in a really good position seven minutes in they throw it into the box and straight away Lucas Paqueta right on the penalty spot with their header gives West Ham United a 1-0 lead with eight minutes played. While our shocking performances this episode continue a floated ball in absolutely no one there to answer it and Lucas Paqueta rows highest. It's a fabulous header to be fair it must be said just nodded it straight down into the corner the goalkeeper had no chance such poor defending though once again it's 1-0 going to be Tete with the throw here as we are a little bit bamboozled we're going to try and see if we can respond though as Tete has it on the right plays it in field to Rodrigo Munoz Munoz though skipping away from a couple of challenges to the edge of the box here looking for a ball in can't get it but we will get a corner that's one that Buendia is going to take here on his right going to look to float it into the penalty spot does looks for the right back Tete as we look to do the same thing that uh, West Ham looked to do to us with a set piece throw it in and try and get ahead on it we did get ahead on it but unfortunately it didn't find the back of the net just like West Ham United managed to Lucas Paquette for West Ham, plays it down the channel, Sutalu though has the beating of Ben Yedder of pace, good defending once again from the Croat, now it's Tete down the right hand side
outside and speaking of pace we've got to try and see if we can utilize the pace of Adama Traore here as he bursts past one he can't burst past two though big challenge from Mavropanos and it falls into the path of Thomas Socek now plays it back into Ben Yedder and this time he does manage to get past Lutalu as Lucas Paqueta now with a couple of step overs and a little bit of trickery tries to look to go down the left hand side manages to find Emerson the left back here looking for the ball in finds the ball into Ben Yedder returns this time it's blocked off but my word we are so close there to going two goals down Buendia though into the path of Adama Traore and the big man now goes into the centre and he now plays a lovely pass into Rodrigo Munoz now the Brazilian on his right oh my goodness Robinson back to Sutalo Sutalo into Buendia in the centre into Dominguez Dominguez floats it back over to the right back Tete Tete takes it down well he's looking for the danger man Adama Traore but he's being double marked here on the right hand side as they're desperately making sure that he doesn't get the ball but eventually it does fall to him and look at the burst of pace he's got to get into the box here he's the missing link that we've been waiting for and Munoz tries to get the ball in the back of the net but once again the keeper is equal to it and once again West Ham managed to clear their lines it's Ben Yedder into Bischoff now for West Ham United into Kudos Kudos out to Lucas Paqueta here the Brazilian into the box looking for an option can't quite get past the French Minister Diop as the referee looks to blow for half time we start the second half though once again finding ourselves 1-0 down and with lots of work to do here in the second 45 as Awobi brings it in looks for Rodrigo Munoz what options has he got up ahead of him manages to find the left back Robinson Robinson weaving turning trying to get away from a couple of challenges can't get past Kufal though and once again it's the final third that's really letting us down Alvarez for West Ham United into Ben Yedda Sutalu tried to come across but he was beaten to the punch and now Kudos has it once again nice little trickery into the path of Kudos sorry into the path of Lucas Paqueta who struck from distance as Leno is forced into a very smart save Ben Yedda will have the corner West Ham all guns blazing here in the opening 10 minutes of the second half floated in looking for another goal here to put the icing on the cake it's Adama Traore tries to get there ahead of the uh, West Ham United midfield Kearney though can't get away from Socek and once again Ben Yedda has it right on the edge of the box it's Bischoff weaving turning away Sutalu though with a real good challenge exactly the the sort of defensive solidity that I want to see from the Croats into Traore. Adama Traore now once again coming deep to collect the ball and using that pace to try and see if he can inject some sort of creativity into this attack. But my goodness, once again, it's poor passing from us to give the ball away and we just cannot quite seem to find that killer pass in the final third to get the goal that we're so desperately craving here in this episode as West Ham bringing away, looking to find a way into my half here, playing it nicely around at the back, trying to bait us into a press to try and see if they can find an opening and find some space which they have on the right hand side, Kufal not it clear though, back into Sutalu, Kearney though gives it away in a difficult position as uh, Socek picks it up, Atom Hamikudos on the right hand side the step over though, Robinson wins it back and now the American can try and burst down this left hand side He's going to look for the run of Rodrigo Munoz. Has he stayed on side? The Brazilian has. The Brazilian goes one-on-one -on -one with Kurtzuma. And oh my goodness, he's not got his shooting boots on today. The big problem is though, with 15 minutes remaining on the clock, you can see with the substitutions I'm making and the lack of quality coming in off the bench, my squad are not in a position to really try and challenge for anything this season. Lukic though, on as a substitute, wins it back in a good position. Can he feed in Willian on as a sub? Willian looking for someone, anyone to give the ball to, and he gives it to Tete on the right hand side. Looks to try and whip it across, gets a corner for his troubles. And it's the big man, Adama Traore, who's going to be the man to take that corner. Looking for an outswinger here, into the head of Tom Kearney, who loops it over the bar. Lukic, that's a Robinson on the left hand side. William once again has it, looking to try and skip past one challenge, does do a really good job of doing so, and he skips, oh he almost, he does in fact, skip past two challenges, William into the box, into Adama Traore, through the legs of the goalkeeper, but it's not enough as Ariola just about manages to smother it, only about five minutes left remaining on the clock here, it's floated out to Anthony Robinson, into Kearney, Kearney into William. William takes it on on his right, the Brazilian tried to strike, but once again it's blocked off, Pot shots from the outside of the penalty area are not going to be enough here if we want to try and get back into this game. Kudos has it though. Robinson comes across with a good challenge. Anything will do now. Willian floats it back over to the American on the left-hand side who knocks it down. Look at him trying anything to get the ball forward here. He's got no option, so instead he's just going to try and whip this one into the box. Lukic though has it. Plays it back. Looking for anyone. He can't quite find it in the end. West Ham just clear their lines and there are three blows for full time. Well, yet again, it's another game and it's another loss here at Craven Cottage. As a full-time era finishes Fulham nil, West Ham 1. It's a loss that takes us down now to 15th place in the Premier League and we so
suddenly find ourselves hovering just three points above the relegation zone. And whilst, yes, we may have ended up losing back-to-back -back played games 1-0, looking at this team, I don't think it's necessarily my defence that's the problem. Because whilst Rodrigo Munoz seems to be having a fairly decent season, scoring nine goals and 16 appearances, it's everywhere else on the pitch that we are sorely lacking. Andreas Pereira in second place with just four goals to his name. And it just goes to show that in our other areas, sorry, of the pitch, we're really struggling to find the mark. Is it down to a lack of quality in these areas? Or is it down to a system that's just not quite working for these players? Do I need to consider changing up my formation to potentially try and get the best out of this team? Or with £32 million still left to spend in the budget and just a few weeks left remaining until the start of the January transfer window, do I need some fresh blood into this team to try and inject some sort of creativity into what has been a pretty lacklustre attack so far this season? Let me know what you think down in the comments below because that is going to be that for the end of today's episode. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time.